खाना कावा ये पुकारा मिलके लगाओ सभी है दरी नारा बिस्मिल्लाम वी कंटिन्यू योर डिस्कोर्स in reference to the hadith narrated on the authority of Zayd ibn Thabit which illustrates that a number of sahaba gathered outside the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and rose their voices and made noise and then they uh, threw rocks at the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam while demanding that salat al-tarawih should be performed the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam comes out with anger and addresses those people. And insha'Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will see what the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said. And you have seen in the uh, narration of Bukhari as well. This is the book of Sahih Muslim, volume number two, page 301, the book of the travelers. The Number of hadith is 1825. On the authority of Zayd ibn Thabit, it was narrated hadith number 1825. It was narrated that Zayd ibn Thabit said, The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sectioned off an area using palm tree leaves or a reed mat. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out and prayed in it. Some men followed him and they started to follow his prayer. Then they came out one night, another night. So we know what night, on the first night they did what happened. We, we showed it to you from the book of Bukhari. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat down and expelled them from masjid. So this is another night. They come out another night. Then they came one night and waited for him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. But the Messenger of Allah, let me make this a little bigger so you could read it easier. But the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, stayed away and did not come out to them. They raised their voices and threw pebbles at the, at the door. This is a rather accurate translation. They threw pebbles. Pebbles are small rocks. They threw they raised their voices and they did not knock. They threw pebbles, stones at the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the door, the Messenger of Allah came out to them angrily and said, angrily, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, you were so persistent in praying behind me. Now, in praying behind me, he's accurate. They have put it in, in, in parentheses. You have been so persistent in your demand. You are so pers persistent in your deed and your enterprise. That I thought that it would be made obligatory for you. Yeah, This is also a uh, more accurate translation than what you have in Bukhari. You should pray in your houses for the best prayer of a man, of a man's to, for the best of a man's prayer is, is in his house, apart from the obligatory prayers. Uh, in the previous lectures, we have explained to you that this fragment, that the best prayer is one which ma a man prays at his house, except the obligatory prayers, is not a sahih hadith. It's not a hadith at all because it is against the sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not been narrated to have said this hadith except on this occasion when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rejected the Sahaba and was angry at the Sahaba. And if indeed it were the case that praying at home is better than praying at mosque, if the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have observed that matter himself also, he would have not erected for himself an enclosure, a room inside the mosque to perform his recommended prayers. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should have been narrated to have said this matter repeatedly. Why? Because it's a matter that happens often. People come to the masjid, perform prayers. And not all prayers are obligatory. So for the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to have reminded them that it's better they should perform their salat at their homes, there would have been so many occasions and so many 
uh, different uh, times that he would have said that. If he had indeed said so, it would have been narrated because there is plentitude of reasons, plentitude of occasions that such a statement should have come from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I showed you the hadith from Bukhari that praying at the mosque of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is 1,000 times better than other places. Therefore, praying at homes cannot be better than praying at the mosque of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We had explained this fragment in the previous lectures. Now, after uh, having recited to you the hadith, I should mention this hadith is narrated, has been narrated in many trusted books of hadith that are uh, considered reliable by the adverse community, such as the book of Sharh Mushkil Athar of Tahawi, such as the book of Musnadi Abi Awana, Sunani Abi Dawood, and many other books. Al Albani and Sahih Sunani Abi Dawood, he declares this hadith to be Sahih. And Albani is a very impressive figure and a very uh, respected figure uh, before the Wahhabi cult, before the Salafi cult. And likewise, uh, this book has been narrated by Bukhari in Muslim, as we showed to you, and what has been narrated by Bukhari and also by Muslim. Such a hadith enjoy a very high level of excellence and reliability and trustworthiness. Having recited to you the hadith and referred to you uh, its other uh, books where this hadith has been chronicled, now I begin to enumerate and explain the reasons and the demonstrations that could be inferred from this hadith which indicate, which prove, which illustrate that taraweeh is indeed an act of blasphemy and not an act of supplication and worship before the deity, before the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah Almighty, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. In this hadith, the reasons that I have not uh, in indicated in the previous lectures, first, you saw that these people gathered, came to the, Nabi, uh, to the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost, this hadith also indicates that the, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he made himself a partition inside the masjid, so he will have some private area for his recommended prayers. The Sahaba followed him and they uh, started praying um, in congregation prayers behind him without asking him. So this hadith also encompasses that element that originally the Sahaba started praying taraweeh behind the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without his permission, without his commandment, without his recommendation. But that matter, we had mentioned it in the previous lecture, so we are not going to repeat here. What's new in this hadith that was not included in the previous hadith is the following matter. The Sahaba came to the, Nabi sallallahu, came to the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and demanded that he should come out and pray taraweeh with them. In other words, they are calling, they are enjoining the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to offer taraweeh along with them. In other words, they are the ones who are, uh, who have, uh, who, who are the leaders. They are leading the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and bringing him and trying to bring him to the mosque to perform salat al-taraweeh. And this is insufficient for proving that taraweeh is batil. Why? Because had taraweeh been a valid form of prayer, a valid form of worship before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It would have not been that the Sahaba enjoined the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and called on to him to perform this salah, but rather the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be calling the nations, not only the Sahaba, but all the world, that they should perform recommended prayers in congregation and assembly, which would be Salat al taraweeh Why we do not have any hadith from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa None whatsoever. Why on this occasion, the Sahaba, the ones who are supposed to be followers of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are becoming the leaders. They have uh, raised and rushed towards an action 
which is to perform Salat al-Taraweeh while the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is absent. Of course, the Umri congregation would reply that this is not because Taraweeh is not an act of worship, but the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come out, did not come out while the Sahaba gathered, the Sahaba gathered to perform Taraweeh. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come out because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam feared that Taraweeh would become obligatory, would become compulsory. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very compassionate and very considerate of its ummah. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that the ummah would not be able to perform Taraweeh always. And because uh, should Taraweeh become obligatory and a great plurality of the ummah would be unable to perform Taraweeh, this would be sin on their behalf. This would be, they would become sinful, they would be violate Allah's rules, and they would deserve punishment. Therefore, as an act of compassion, as an act of love, as an act of mercy and care for his ummah, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not come out. While the Sahaba did not know this, they came out. This would be their excuse, and this is their common excuse. And inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, in the future, will present to you lectures, as I referred uh, to you time and again, that this is impossible. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised on the night of Mi'raj, and the hadith is present in Bukhari, and the hadith is present, and the very reliable and trustworthy books of hadith uh, of the uh, adverse community, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not make any more obligatory prayers, how could the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have feared that taraweeh would become obligatory. This, this is our proof number one. Proof number two, equally strong, is that we do not have any principle that uh, being persistent with performing recommended actions, this evokes the recommended actions to change into becoming obligatory. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was persistent and performing many, many, many recommended actions of worship or actions that are not of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they did not become obligatory just because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or a number of sahaba were persisting, were persistent in performing them. Therefore, there is no verse of Quran, no hadith, no intellectual uh, principle which would indicate and justify that performing a recommended action uh, entails that action becoming obligatory. And there are many other reasons, inshallah, in the independent lecture we will present to you, we'll, we, will, uh, we will explain to you. Therefore, the first uh, uh, reason why taraweeh is batil, which is easily inferred from this hadith, is the very fact these sahaba gathered these Sahaba gathered outside the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These Sahaba were calling the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to perform this salah with them. And then they transgressed and they raised their voices and they threw rocks at the house of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which the desecration of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The disrespect of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not only a sin, it's kufr. And inshallah we'll talk about that. Just, but, we, but we are leaving that aside for now. Just the fact that these people, these Sahaba, preceded the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa They were ahead of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reluctant. Rather, he's not only reluctant, he's angry. And angrily, he disperses them and sends them to their homes. This is sufficient to prove that taraweeh cannot be a, an action that is... Uh, seen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in favorable view that is acceptable and desirable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's look at the hadith of Bukhari one more time. And also the hadith in Muslim which I've shown you. Kitab of Bukhari, the book of Bukhari, volume number eight, translated by Dr. Muhammad Mohsen Khan, published by uh, Kitab Bhavan of India, page number 85. Hadith number 134, narrates Sayyid ibn Thabit. <clears throat> then again, the next night they came for the prayer. But Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa 
delayed and did not come out to them. So they raised their voices. So they raised their voices. Let's read it again. Then again the next night they came for the prayer. But Allah's Messenger وسلم, delayed and did not come out to them. So they raised their voices and knocked the door with pebbles. They did not knock the door, they threw rocks at the Nabi But we will not, we, right now we focus on this fact that this band of Sahaba, they preceded the Nabi وسلم, and in actions that are actions of virtue, and beyond, the apostles of Allah, the messengers of Allah, are never preceded. They're always, they're always ahead of every person of, of their ummah because they are the best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the best people to be his messengers, to be his prophets and apostles. How could it be possible an action which is worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan? And while the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had time and again reminded people, entreated people earnestly to perform recommended prayers, how could it be that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself is falling behind and his ummah is getting ahead of him? And that is not possible, the ummah to be better than the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ummah to be ahead of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in virtuous actions. Therefore, this action cannot be virtuous. This action cannot be desirable before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we see a number of people are preceding the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this could be proved from the verses of the Noble Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadayi allahi wa rasoolah wa attaqullah inna allaha samiyun alim. O people who believe, do not be, go ahead of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do not be, do not precede the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa If you precede the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa it amounts to be, uh, to preceding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to fall ahead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wattaqullah and fear Allah's punishment, for Allah is all hearing and all seeing. So my first reason is very clear, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, this verse that I recited to you, it's not a bad, it wouldn't be a bad idea that I show you the verse how it's been translated by the Omri congregation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the Holy Quran published by Saudi Arabia. By King Fahd uh, Complex for publication of the Noble Quran, page 701, Surah Al-Hujurat, The Dwellings. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yaday illahi wa rasoolih wa attaquullah inna allaha sameeun alim. O you who believe, make not a decision in advance. The, as has the, the translator has put a, a decision in parentheses, there is no such thing as decision in this verse. Do not be advanced. Do not be proceeding. Do not be ahead of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Do not have, do not make an, do not make, do not be in advance. This is not good, uh, good. Do not make a decision in advance. There is no decision there. Do not be in advance. Do not be ahead. Do not be before uh, Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And fear Allah, and verily Allah is all hearing, all knowing. And inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, in the coming lectures, we'll present to you more reasons. Inshallah, why Salat al Taraweeh is void. Allah bless you all. Thank you so much and keep well.